Buenas tardes desde la Ciudad de México. I'm gonna do a little bike check today and show you what I'm gonna be riding for a tour of La Sierra Madre Oriental. Got a route that's gonna span 500 kilometers and 15,000 meters along the Rio Amahac in some really super pesado sierra. So this is the setup. Now yeah, we'll do a little bike check. Chinelli, it's the new Chinelli 2024 Nemo Gravel, El Nemo, handmade in Italy, Columbus Steel Gravel. Um, this is a pretty wild bike. Uh, it's all decked out right now. This is what my setup will look like for this trip. We've got a seat bag, we've got a half frame bag, top tube bag, rear top tube bag, and a harness on the front. I'm feeling really good about this ride. We're actually going uh, in in June. We uh, we as in Polly and I, we went to La Sierra de Hidalgo. Hidalgo is a state uh, north of Mexico City in the Valley of Mexico, and we're going to La Sierra Madre Oriental. Um, very big mountains, very hot, super hot, very dry. Big storm cells come through there too, so it's be interesting to see what the weather's like. We're there in the summertime and routed from Pachuca to Las Grutas de Tolantongo. It was super cool, really beautiful. There's posas there and hot springs and natural baths. It's, it's really something else, it's incredible. Um, but we want to use that as a jump off to do a further circuit into the Sierra. So we just finished up a route uh, we're going for, it's an eight-day route, or about a week. It is 500 kilometers and 15,000 something meters of climbing. Um, there are 6,000, uh, or that is just over 50,000 feet of climbing and just a little over 300 miles. Um, our days are really only like 30 to 40 miles, but each day has at least 6,000 feet of climbing. Um, these are like five, 6,000 foot climbs. There's 6,000, 8,000 foot descents. I mean, this is really, really big. These are big mountains. Um, so this is gonna be a really good test for this bike. I'm a little worried for what to expect, uh, but we'll see. I think I'm pretty well prepared here. Um, I've got enough gear, I've got enough, I've got rain gear, I've got warm gear. I think the big thing now is going to be um, just if I can if I can handle it. I think the bike is well capable. It's going to be a great test for this bike, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good about this trip and this ride. So, yeah. Wasn't sure if I wanted to run a full frame bag on this or not, but I opted for bottles. I really like having accessible bottles. Um, this is probably the heaviest setup I would want to run. Um, anyway, I always have the Electrolyte down below. Usually I got cocoa, but you know, we got some naranja mandarina on there today. Big shout out to C Cyclery and you know, my man Greg, thank you for getting me good old golden saddle bottles. Anyway, more on the bike. So, I've been waiting a while for this bike and I'm really excited. I only actually got this together a matter of days ago, so it's kind of... Uh, surprising that I'm going to be bringing it on such an intense trip um, basically for its first ride which is not really my preference but we are headed to um, across Andes in Chile at the end of November so this is the bike so we have a we have a SRAM Axis group on here um, now this is a mountain bike derailleur with the Eagle set up so we have a 52 tooth chain, uh, cassette cog in the back here for climbing Got the DT Swiss. They're a, they're a 24 internal diameter width rim, which is most important for me. And a big 42 deep rim depth, making it a stronger wheel. Um, super, super important for me is always tire selection. I have 45 C tires on this bike. If you look here, you can really see just how big these are. And they're nice and tall, they've got a lot of volume. This is the tire from Hutchinson. It's a very technical tire for a gravel tread. It's more of a mountain bike tire. It has these really tight center knobs. 
for fast rolling on pavement, but as you see, it gets looser and really aggressive towards the edges. So when you're riding really rough terrain like we encounter here in the Sierra, it's gonna hook up really nicely. It's also a wet weather tire, um, so it sheds mud nicely. Um, really great first impression so far. I've yet to really put them to the test, but let's see. It is a Hutchinson Tundra. Um, pretty hard to, to get your hands on, but really, really dope tire. I got them from my partner, Polly, and she used them in Oaxaca, and she's descending faster than I've ever seen her ride, so let's go. <laughs> Um, so, in terms of gear setup here, also I've got a 42 on the front, so 42, 52, still pretty low gearing, but I really want a 40 or a 38 on here. Um, not really so sure if this is going to work out for me this trip, but we'll find out. <laughs> I might actually go switch the chain ring right now. I have a 40. really shows you how fresh this bike is. So we've got this really interesting setup here, where we have an inch and a quarter tapered fork with uh, 20 millimeters of suspension. Some of you might be quick to point out that this reminds me at least of, you know, a, an old Cannondale head shock. Um, but we're gonna see how this works. It's a high ride fork. Um, it's also got triple mounts. I've got these cargo cages here. I'm probably not gonna be putting anything on here until we're going to camp. Um, like extra water, for example, big two liter water, boil ice strapped on there. I also have some bags uh, that I can put on here. I might bring one or, or stash it in here. So this bike is steel, Columbus steel, of course. I love Columbus. Um, if you look here, of course, the classic Columbus sticker, and of course, Columbus spirit, meaning just the highest quality too. These are really thin. Super big, I mean, just pan for size. Enormous oversized down tube. Um, the tube selection on this bike is really incredible, actually. We've got these really thin seat stays that are mounted a bit lower than the other ones. My other bike was a more traditional geometry. This one is completely redesigned, more compact. It's longer, it's slacker, it fits bigger tire clearance. But these stays are really incredible, because if you look this way, they're big and fat, but if you look this way, they're super thin, meaning that they're going to want to flex more, giving this a more comfortable ride. Um, got this huge yoke down here, um, as well as this kind of more common these days offset uh, chain stay setup. But otherwise, they've got these Columbus Life short taper stays that I've been a, f I've been a fan of. For 15 years when I got my first hot tubes, I had one of those. Um, um, in the daytime, it has this really, really beautiful, beautiful color. Um, so in terms of setup, we've got a Revelate harness up here. I, tend, I really wish I didn't have to carry this, but it's a whole sleep setup in here. We've got my tent and my sleeping bag packed in here. We've got a two-person uh, Big Agnes tent. Of course, we've got the Wahoo um, set up out front. This light I'm going to actually keep off. It's kind of hard to get stuff around, like mounted without aero bars. This is gonna stay off for the ride until I actually need it. Um, I also have another light set up, which I have a, a helmet mount here for. Uh, that's the main light. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but full light set up for daylight at night. <laughs> Really important, I always have a 35mm camera chilling in this bag here. This is a really nifty point-and-shoot rangefinder. I really love this camera. I've um, been shooting with it a lot. If you look here, we've got the zone focusing right there as you're looking down at it, and manual aperture adjustment. Very cool. This is an Olympus XA. If you know me, I always shoot 35mm. Um, it's crazy. Look at this. I got a lockout on this fork. Super cool. Redundancy for the Wahoo mount if it breaks. Void lays to stabilize it. Really very minimal stuff up here. Just got a rain jacket and uh, you know a buff in case it gets cold and rains. And of course this Apidura bag which I adore. This came from Oaxaca in San Jose. Lugar de hongos. <laughs> we've got another light back here on the bag. Got another light back here. The two front lights. 
and this is my other front light. Also, d food for the day usually goes in this bag for me. I've also got sunscreen, super important, some lip balm. But I've got this magic shine light. Now, this is a pretty serious light. I don't really know how many lumens that says there. 6,500 lumens, super fucking bright. It's got three beams, two floods. You can run in a bunch of different modes. Lasts forever. Um, and it has this honking battery. I mean, this is a huge battery. I think it's a 15,000 or 18,000 milliwatt hour cell. My other battery is 10,000. Um, but this make this at highest power will last like eight hours. If I run it at low power, which is plenty fucking bright, um, this lamp will last. Uh, this lamp will last like 16 to 18 hours. Um, so plenty, plenty of light if not longer. And I think one of the coolest things is that it has a PD USB-C port output and input to be able to charge other peripherals with. So I usually charge my phone out of my bag here and then put my, uh, my phone in my, my cargo bib pocket. So that's my light. We've got a GoPro mount up here as well as the light mount. Um, helmet mounted light is a lot more efficient than a, bi a bike mounted light to begin with. But. I prefer to have it on the bike, but it just worked out this trip that I have to use the helmet. And there we go. <sighs> this is a GoPro mount arm with some extenders to get the light up and over the front here. I had my big light mounted here, uh, but the issue was that it went on my test ride. It shined on the bag and I couldn't see anything. I couldn't get it high enough. If anyone knows of a good GoPro to Garmin adapter mount, um, let me know got inline power here to the Wahoo so we can keep it running for the whole trip um, I've got a battery bank in here this is kind of the sleeve pocket we've got a battery bank I've got my copy of my passport card my Mexican identification um, I always like to keep a multi accessible as well I got that here um, and then maybe some ibuprofen or things like that. In this top tube pack, we keep the snacks. We've got my phone right here charging. I usually don't charge the phone here, but I figure I might run that through there and bring an extra cable. Anyway, we've got snacks in here. That's the main thing. Lighter for the safety meetings. Usually roll of film. This one actually has some joints in it. <laughs> Shows you my priorities here. But really just snacks and accessible things in this bag. Again, tent and sleep uh, sleeping bag up here this is just full of tools um, I'll show you my toolkit at some point I don't need to now um, I might switch out these sandals for some light ones these are bed rocks are pretty heavy I have all my clothes in here I've got a, a down jacket puffy jacket right I've got a, a long sleeve I've got two jerseys two bibs long underwear um, you know casual pair of shorts and three pairs of little socks and yeah all of my food all of my food is going to be in here right now it's empty because I actually have to go home right now and uh, get all the food together for each day there's a decent amount of pueblos it's a very remote region of La Siena that we're going to um, I also might throw some food on the forks here we're gonna see um, it's nice to travel with another person you can split up gear which is really cool you know, let's go. I'm going to the Sierra. Um, probably won't put a link to the route, but again, 300 miles, 50,000 feet of climbing, about a week. It's 500 kilometers, 15,000 meters, all off-road. Really remote pueblos. So, wish us luck. Hopefully, we don't. We get some fair weather. Doesn't storm on us too bad, and hopefully, they don't boil and and die in the daytime from the heat. Because last time we were there. I got really bad heat stroke. So sunscreen, hydrate, eat a lot, and uh, wish us luck camping. I'm really excited for this trip, and uh, I'll check back afterwards. And that's that. Let me go put this video up, and got to catch the bus to Pachuca, baby. Oh, yeah, really important. Got the pump there, too. Got to have a pump. Got to have tools. I'm a little nervous for this tour, but tried to plan the days as, as chill as we possibly can. 
So hopefully that works in our favor. Um, just some really, really big climbs and descents. The heat gets pretty serious in this zone too. Pretty rough roads. There's no GPS tracks recorded on this stuff. I'm using OSM bike maps and OSM topo maps. Um, just to kind of piece together stuff with the satellite that doesn't fill in with that map. And uh, you know, we have a pretty crazy route. So, vamos. My name is Cooper Ray. Thanks for tuning in. I feel a little weird doing these videos, to be honest. I'm like in the park, in my park, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm that guy with a GoPro. But I really want to share these stories and kind of what I'm doing here. It's taken me quite a while to build this route out. I'm really excited about this one.